Alright guys, I'm back with another video. So yeah, I had a long weekend. I spent basically the entire weekend uh, just working on this project for the last uh, two days nonstop. And so I'm going to go over some of the things that I changed in here. For one, uh, the auto unequip was refactored and it's replicated now. So he'll automatically unequip and then re-equip whenever you get back up onto something. Uh, later on, I'll probably add a transition animation where he like puts it away, you know? Uh, for right now, it's you're going to have that kind of weird blending uh, whenever it comes back in and starts blending back in. Uh, and that's because the, the weapon R is blending in, uh, and that's what the weapon is attached to. Uh, for a live retargeted character, you probably wouldn't see that. Uh, yeah, you wouldn't see that because it's on a socket. And you'll see that we can uh, go over as many things as we want. And when we're done, he'll just automatically re-equip it. Uh, so that was a little tricky to get working properly, uh, which is why I had to refactor it like twice. Uh, because I noticed that there was a problem whenever we were doing that across multiple ones. But yeah. And this is a dedicated server, by the way. And I... Right now, I have it so that you can trigger on and off in mine, but in yours, it won't be like that. Uh... Uh, you'll just have to aim in order to shoot. I took that mechanic off, and the reason why is because in order to get that to work with the repo version without uploading the entire thing, I would, in fact, have to make a slight modification to the base code, and I didn't want to do that. Um, I'm trying to keep the setup for the repo uh, version as minimal as possible, uh, which is why I'm avoiding messing with any of the base uh, stuff. Uh, so, and this is a child of the base uh, class uh, that comes in the uh, motion matching project. So that all, all that stuff is untouched. It's unaltered, except for this trigger mechanic that I set up on mine. Uh, but I was only doing that for debugging purposes. So, yeah, that's basically it for the replication. And now I'll just go ahead and, uh, well, I'll just go ahead and show you this. So I'm handling the way that this data is being stored and loaded now. Now we're using choosers. And also I found a solution for uh, the hand plate or the finger problem for the uh, characters. So you'll you'll know that when you live retarget these uh, animations or hard retarget animations, it's common. In fact, uh, uh, of, uh, it's almost unheard of. Uh, for the fingers, when they get retargeted, they come out looking funny. They'll be all twisted at an angle uh, like this rather than going straight and they just do some really weird stuff uh, and so I came up with a solution that fixes that and it's it works every single time I'll briefly go over it uh, so let me just start with this so a lot of people they approach uh, these animation systems, especially the motion matching and even mine. Uh, they approach it with this mentality: we don't want live retargeting. Live retargeting creates overhead. Uh, we want to do a hard retarget. That's that's a naive uh, approach, and it's a and it's based off of a fallacy that if you do a hard retarget, you'll get better results and you won't have to modify the animations. You'll still have to modify the animations, and you won't just have to modify them for one character. For example, I won't only have to modify it for this body type, I'll have to modify it for the other 17, 
metahuman body types too. And I would have to retarget it to each and every single one of those. And I would have to modify all these poses for each and every one of those. Uh, so you can do it that way. It's going to be a lot of work. My approach is kind of a middle ground. It allows you to basically just retarget the animations that you're having uh, problems with the fingers on and then modify them for th that character and then retarget them back. And then inside of the inside of the character blueprint, you go to the class defaults and you go to held objects. And I'll just show you. And you create a, a new primary data asset, uh, action data, based off the action data weapon one. And then you create your another child of the pistol layer. And you assign those retargeted animations here and you set that here and then inside of here under the DAO category you just set that right here so the held objects are still stored like this now uh, but you'll notice that the mesh, the weapon mesh is actually stored in these now. And we also have a gameplay tag and a display name, just in case anybody needs that, needs access to that. Uh, so that's there. So whenever it fetches it, it just grabs all that information from the data asset now. You'll notice too that there's something missing inside of this live retargeting thing. And that's because we're no longer uh, setting the live retargeting ass data assets from here. Instead, on the character blueprint, you'll now notice a function in here. Actually, there's two functions in here, uh, and I haven't uh, set them in, into a category. I'll set that. I'll categorize them later. But this one right here, it's just an empty function, and it's meant to be overridden by children of this class. So this DAO bodies, it's a child of that class. And if we look here, you can override those functions here. And I've overridden this one right here. And I'm actually just assigning... Uh, I'm having a chooser return the held object settings. And so inside of here now, you'll see that for each of these metahumans, we have their IK retargeting settings uh, right inside of here. And those are actually choosers too. Those are nested choosers. So inside of here and this is what you'll see on the other characters because those other characters only the metahumans did i uh, nest them inside of this uh, chooser on the other ones you'll just see these and it'll hold the pistols and it'll hold the rifles for that character so that's how that works all you have to do is create a, a new asset, create you a new one of these, and then assign it and, and tell it what kind of rifle it is. Now that brings me to the gameplay tags. The reason why I tell people not to override my config settings is because if we go into the project settings, uh, you'll see that under the gameplay tags, we have these gameplay tag tables. And I, and I put my gameplay tags inside of these tables so that they were portable. 
So if you do override the config settings, that's actually fine. Just go into your project settings gameplay tags, and you just have to load these data uh, tables uh, back in. So this one holds all the states and stances. And then the other one, let me find it. Yeah, I didn't name them <laughs> consistently. I'll probably, uh, re oops, yeah, I'll go ahead and rename this one. Yeah, it may break the reference when you rename these. Let's see. There we go. Yeah, so I broke the reference. So now I have to uh, reset it. But yeah, these are the uh, metahuman tags. These are just to help me identify the body types uh, from inside of the uh, DAO bodies uh, because I actually I actually just have a uh, an array of gameplay tags that I'm actually just cycling through right here uh, for the males and the females. So I changed I changed that up from the way they were handling it. I felt I felt like this was a, a better approach. So this is actually called held object states, but whenever you guys see it, it's going to not be called held object states. It's going to be called uh, GT container. And if you find the references in here, you'll see whenever we update the IK retargeter, I, I add this held object state to it. I call this and then I remove it. And that's the thing that we're overriding in our children classes. So this will uh, return a reference to the correct uh, data asset. It'll set it and save a reference to it. And then it'll just clear that tag. And then it'll start loading all of that. Just as before, we're just handling it in a different method uh, manner now. I liked the ideal of using choosers for this purpose because it it makes it dramatically cleaner uh, whenever you're dealing with a lot of assets, as you can see here. But if you see this, I actually broke a reference to it uh, because I, I renamed it, but that's fine. I'll go back and fix all of that later before I push this uh, change and re renaming of this. So yeah, that basically covers all the all the changes that I made. And I'll be making a video on bringing in your own character and setting them up with all this stuff uh, here pretty soon. I was going to do that this weekend, but I I kind of ran out of time. I, I need some time to relax, and it's already 5.33, so I don't have much time left in the day. Uh, so, yeah. I'm not going to do that video today, but I wanted to get this video out to you guys uh, so you knew what changes I had made. I did make a lot of changes. I it, I had to overhaul a lot of stuff in order to pull that off. Also, if you haven't noticed as well, if we go back into the main character here and we come in here, you'll notice that I added a A cycling uh, system. So instead of pressing one, two, and three now, uh, we're actually we're actually just pressing uh, Q and E. 
Uh, yeah, so it's not using it because I uh, broke the reference to that uh, container. So it's not able to choose it. I'll have to fix that. But yeah, Q and E on the keyboard is how you change that. And if you want to know, if you go to the event graph, oh, actually, if you go under the input, you'll see I'm overriding their input, the base input, uh, fun setup input function. And here I'm adding my own. And so in here, I'm just adding a few to what they already have. And you can see the keys inside of here for those. And these are the cycle uh, weapon keys. So I kept the emote example, but I removed that fighting stance uh, example. I may introduce something similar to that, uh, reintroduce something similar to that in the future. Uh, so if you already have an older version of that and you like it, then uh, you could uh, port it over if you want. I believe I documented it pretty well, but uh, I also have videos covering that. So you can always go back and watch those if you're interested. But yeah, also the setting of the held object state is uh, universal now. So anytime you just want to update the held object state, you just call this event right here, update held object state. Um, this is a little debugger. If you're having problems for whatever reason, uh, this will print out the game, uh, the game states to help you identify uh, what state you're in and uh, why something's messing up. And that's pretty much it. I've documented things pretty well in here. And I'll see you in the next video.